This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we're going to head down to the Huntsville Ham Fest. Chris, KY4CKP, and I dropped by uh, the convention center, the Von Braun Convention Center, and took a look at some really interesting ham radio gear. And we got a chance to talk with some wonderful people. That's what's coming up this week on Elkara Ham Radio. Well, as we move about the convention center, we stopped by the POTA booth first thing. Now, we have a video up already of speaking with Michael Turner uh, about the POTA gear that he creates. That's clubgearonline.com. And uh, I saw two or three things that uh, not only did I want for myself, but would be a great addition in the actual emergency communications trailer. Here he's showing us some of the banners and flags that you can purchase, and uh, he's got them in different colors and so forth. Again, if you want to see a really good interview with Michael, uh, head on over, and I'll try to put a link here in the top right corner for those of you watching on your computer. But Michael has all kinds of things, and uh, not just POTA, but club-related equipment as well. And then we started moving around the convention center. You're going to see the big players at these types of ham fests. Uh, Chris and I went to Hamvention in Ohio. This is down in Alabama. And, of course, there's Hamcation down in Florida. And that's just here more or less on the East Coast side. There's some big ones over on the West Coast. But uh, you'll see vendors that uh, are well-known in the ham radio uh, hobby. And here's Tar Heel, and we've also got a wonderful interview uh, with the, the owner of Tar Heel Designs here. And uh, again, I'll try to put a card up here in the top right corner for those of you watching on your computer. If you're not on your computer, you're not going to see the cards, uh, but you can uh, uh, take a look at our list of videos, and you'll see both the POTA interview, POTA gear uh, uh, interview, and the Tar Heels design interview uh, in our video list. There's DX Engineering, one of the big aggregators for the hobby, as we pan a little bit more. And as we continue on here, we're looking at some of the gear at the Tar Heels booth. You'll see during the interview uh, that he's got the, uh, the tuners here, and uh, you'll also get a chance to see a really interesting Tar Heel dipole design. Now, a hamvention wouldn't be what it is without so many different, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, infield sales. In this case, booths, many, many booths here at the uh, hamvention uh, location. And they're selling all kinds of things from embroidered T-shirts and with your logos and so forth to lots and lots of ham radio gear. In fact, Chris and I were looking for very specific items. Speaking of an item, and I'll talk more about this towards the end of the video, we're looking at a Bieno battery here. This is the 15 amp hour, and again, I'll have more to say about this, but the booth itself has many, many different sizes of these batteries, and what I like about them is not only are they the battery itself, but they have the BMS built in so that you can uh, plug it in and charge it with one of the chargers that they make available. Again, we'll have more to say about this particular battery and where it will fit in El Cara's future. You can see some of the larger batteries there to the right. Lots of good stuff here at the booth. And here we're looking at some specific items that uh, are uh, dealing with uh, different ways of connecting the batteries, chargers, shunts, so that you can get a feel for how much power you're using. In fact, we'll talk more about that shunt coming up towards the end of the video. The Bieno Power Booth, if you will, is at most of the larger ham fest. So drop on by, and if you're buying several, they might even help you out. Here we're panning across the back end of the convention center, and I just wanted to give you an indication of just how many booths there were. Uh, Chris and I were looking for radios in particular, uh, uh, older 
uh, ICOM 121s and 221s. The 121s are VHF and the 221s are UHF. And uh, these radios we're using for crossband repeaters for an upcoming rally. So it's, it, uh, it helps to check around some of the booths to see if any of those radios might be out there for sale. But look at the number of people. This was the largest crowd I have seen at the Hamfest in Huntsville. And as we continue to pan around, this was on the back side. We're looking at some interesting antenna designs, basically what are loop designs. And you'll see some of this same equipment at some of the other ham fests, but if this was the only ham fest you had a chance to visit, you'll get to see many of the same vendors. And that's the great thing about it is it's regional so that you can get your time at a somewhat large ham fest. Here we're looking at uh, Youth on the Air's booth. We got a chance to talk with a couple of the folks here, and one of our local uh, ham radio amateurs, a young man, uh, we got a chance to talk with who's also very active with Youth on the Air. And we also had the Boy Scouts out in force showing remote-controlled cars and so forth, utilizing some of the same kinds of frequencies we use in ham radio. Getting the youth involved is incredibly important. Now, we wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of items that we were looking for. We were looking for the radios that I mentioned a little bit earlier for the crossband repeater projects. And again, one of the reasons to go to HamFest is you can many times, if your club doesn't have the equipment that you need for your projects, the HamFest will, there's a good chance the HamFest will have some of that equipment. One of the things we were needing for each of the kits that we're building is a shunt that gives us an indication of watts being consumed, amperage, uh, and so forth, the, uh, the battery power, the voltage. And as we were talking to the Bieno folks at their booth, uh, we were talking about the, the batteries and so forth, and as we were about to leave, they called us back over and says, you're going to need one of these for your project. And I wanted to highlight it today because they did not have to give us this. We didn't ask for it, but we're definitely going to use it within the project. And then speaking of another item we wanted to get a good look at were the batteries. We need a small form factor, and a lithium-based battery will work the best for these crossband repeater kits, these mobile ones. And again, I'll try to put a card up in the top right about that series. In fact, we'll have a new video on that coming out soon. But the battery needs to be able to work somewhere between two and four hours uh, in each of the kits. We're building seven of these with uh, one for backup. And uh, the 15 amp hours seemed to be the one that was recommended by uh, the gentleman here. So we're going to be looking at purchasing several of these. In fact, we mentioned this at our monthly meeting, and we've got several of our members that want to buy batteries for themselves. So we may have a pretty substantial order to place in the near future. So a second item that we need for those crossband repeaters. So now if we just transition over to the project, the reason we go to HamFest many times is not only to see a lot of the people that we want to talk to, but to look for equipment for projects that we have. And at El Cara, we have projects all over the place. Uh, you'll notice the battery here in the top left corner on this screenshot from the upcoming video. Uh, it's that longer form factor, and it will fit in this kit build. And But this battery is one of our members, and uh, you know these aren't cheap, so we want to purchase uh, batteries for these kits. And the one that Chris was holding just a little bit earlier in the video will fit nicely in this form factor in this portable kit. You'll also notice the shunt that we've built here in the middle. And you can buy these. In fact, the Bayino folks uh, gave us one, and we're going to use that in testing and so forth. Um, and you can make the shunts, though, instead of just buying them right out of the box. If you don't have the time to build a shunt, Definitely that one that Bieno is providing for uh, our testing purposes would work wonderfully. But one of the things that you'll want to do as a club is go to HamFest, pick up the parts that you're going to need, and build some of these same parts. And here we've manually built a shunt and the ability to monitor the voltage and the amperage. So that's a part of this crossband repeater build. And then you can see the two radios on the right just below that lid that we're going to include in each of the kits, an ICOM 121 and an ICOM 221 for VHF, UHF crossbanding. It's these types of projects that help your members learn and help bring others into the hobby because it's more of doing things than just talking about things. 
For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. We hope you like the video. Get out there at your local or regional ham fest and look for some of these types of parts, projects, and kits that you might be able to purchase and learn more about your hobby. We hope you enjoy the video. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. 73.